If you're like me, you're the kind of person who digs around in lots and you pick up things at fairs or on eBay that contain oddities inside them and you don't know what to do with them. And this, these are two oddities that I've turned into a Belgian branch line passenger train. The first one came in a bunch of coaches and it was a Fleischmann SNCB Belgian coach. Now, a very nice coach, classic Fleischmann quality, well made, and I don't have any Belgian locomotives and I wasn't going to, you know, got um, the same kick that I had went on with the SNCF French stuff and, you know, started buying up Belgian stuff. Now, in another lot at the very end was this Jew-F shunter. Now, this thing... I can move it back a bit so you can get a better look at it. This thing was the first ever model locomotive ever made by Jew-F in France. Two million of these things were made, or sold. Two million of them were sold in train sets or as individual locos. Now, it's a completely freelance design, okay? And there's a great affection for these in France. If you go looking at French YouTube channels or websites, they have a great fondness for these. They remember them, you know, as their first model train, their first loco. And you'll see even like, you know, really, you know, top quality French layouts. And so they'll run these now and again for a bit of fun and nostalgia. It has the same kind of affection in French model trains as, say, the Tyco ones like the Silver Streak from the 70s that have in American HO modelers. So I pulled this thing out and it wasn't working. So I fiddled around when I got the motor going, cleaned up the pickups, and painted it and weathered it in such a way that it would approximate a Belgian steam logo. There's nothing like this. It's it's just purely a pastiche. I put a driver in the cab. I gave the wheels a tarnishing with a Vallejo paint just to cover up. They were very bright and plasticky, as was the body. I put on buffers, proper buffers, on the front and the back because on the original model, you just have these kind of rounded stubs. Then I picked out certain details like the handrails and these steps, the number plate and these piping up here in silver. I had also painted the the front part of the firebox, smoke box, black and the roof black and the coal black. And the end result is, now this was sold everywhere. It was sold in the United States as an American loco. And to look at it, it wouldn't be a million miles away from a dock shunter. They put a cow catcher in the front, however, on the American version to make it look more American. I've seen it sold as British Rail in double O. And if you look at it, it's taller than the the HO coach. So, it, you know, it, it fits nicely in HO, double O scale uh, British layouts. This started production in 1954 or 56, I'm not sure. This is one of the early versions. And um, the weathering really brought out the, the riveting. I used a uh, Games Workshop uh, air shade to, bring, to pop the rivets out. And it's a noisy, it's not an elegant runner, but I tell you, for something that was you know, 50 up, maybe 60 years old, maybe more, in a box and and a coach that was really superfluous to anything I want. I now have a Belgian branch line train. And it is a noisy runner. But it runs nonetheless. And it does, this loco does have a particular charm about it. It, it struggles with the dead front points, not surprisingly. And 
it was the beginning of the Jouet Empire, you know, in terms of the models they produced. And um, it introduced a lot of people in France into model trains. Let's bring it around here again. And I think that set looks, that coach and that loco looks very smart together. And they've got, I mean, it's, it runs okay. It's not, it's not great. You're not going to get that kind of performance out of a, an 040 with that kind of motor. Speaking of the motor, the magnet was a bit on the weak side. So what I did was, I didn't replace it. I got um, neodymium cheap's tiny magnets and I added them to uh, the existing magnet so I didn't have to replace it just to boost the power. There's another video on my channel where I've done this to American Mantua trucks. The same thing again. I increased the magnet's strength. Like, that's not bad at all, really. I mean, it's really noisy, you know. But then again, these were the, the memories. This was the memories we had as kids, wasn't it? That these kinds of noisy trains, they, you know, they thrilled us as children. And I could definitely see why this model has such a, a nostalgic, nostalgic place in French model railway enthusiasts. You can't really get it too slow. So that's it. Let's have a good look here. Try to get a focus. There you go. I just noticed I don't have the corridor connection for this, but that's okay, I get one. So, from the scrap box, a freelance Belgian passenger branch line train and uh, I'm very happy.